I'm associate at Arup. I lead a facade engineering team, so I'm a specialist within a multidisciplinary uh, engineering practice. I lead a small team in Italy, but I'm part of a European network and a global group of facade engineers. That means that I'm assisting architects and clients in the design of facades. Uh, I'm also chairing the Society of Facade Engineering, so an important uh, role is that of promoting the discipline globally. For me, uh, one of the uh, biggest challenges is how we deal with uh, existing buildings. We need to upgrade existing buildings to perform to today's standards. Uh, they need to uh, mitigate climate change and they need to adapt to a changing climate. So that's a big challenge for us as professionals, as, as an industry, to come up with solutions and approaches that will allow us to do that. I think the, the definition of roles is, is key here. Um, I'm a facade engineer. I represent the Society of Facade Engineering. And one of our most important tasks is to uh, define the roles in the design team. Uh, we need to help our clients uh, understand what is needed in terms of skills and competencies. And we need to help them articulate what they need to, de to deliver uh, successful projects. And I think only through an understanding of the roles and, for example, where specialist advice is needed throughout the stages, uh, can we deliver uh, successful projects. And that requires an enormous amount of coordination. And so I think that we will see that the, the facade engineer will be seen more and more as an integrator between disciplines. I, I have, I've taken an interest in uh, innovation and new materials, or rather uh, materials used in new ways in building envelopes, and so I'm, I'm particularly interested in the use of, of composite materials which have properties that you can modify and you can come up with uh, really uh, interesting solutions. I think, more broadly speaking, I'm interested in, in a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach, and so uh, addressing issues to do with em embodied carbon and so on in, in, in buildings. And we only now see that the tools are coming online and we can start to actually assess embodied carbon as part of our design. So those tools and the ability to work with new materials uh, in an integrated way is, is, is what excites me most at the moment. So looking at this thing we call sustainability and spotting opportunities rather than just problems. I think events are important. I think that networking is important. We have a, a pretty uh, good group of people, uh, professionals coming together, sharing experience, and I think setting out uh, some visions for the time ahead. So I, I think that these uh, get-togethers are of uh, fundamental importance uh, technically, but also uh, strategically. It's not an easy question. It's a difficult question. Um, I uh, do not wish to uh, nominate one particular facade. Uh, that would be unfair to a lot of people. Um, I have probably some favorites. I would like to perhaps um, mention some historical examples of very, very good design in my opinion. And one might be the um, Scorpius building, Bauhaus uh, uh, Dessau, which is uh, it's unbelievably modern for its time. It's from 1925 and it, it is just an outstanding example of design. Uh, it wouldn't perform to today's standards, so uh, in a sense it has problems. But for its time it was absolutely outstanding. I would like to take inspiration from that building in developing, um, as they say, uh, uh, designs that uh, uh, do what it says on the tin, so, so uh, it's very simple, does the job and it looks great.